From 88.3 WHCM, Harper College, a broadcast service of the Harper College Board of Trustees. Brian Shelton here with you, and it is Tuesday at 2 o'clock, and that can only mean one thing. It is time for Harper Talks right here on FM 88.3 WHCM, and my guest today is Sharon Zacker, who is a faculty member, an adjunct faculty member in the fashion program here at Harper College, and we've just been having a blast for the last hour, well, I've enjoyed it anyway, I've uh, been having a blast for the last hour, half hour or so uh, talking in the office about what's going on in the fashion program and uh, fashion in general. And I just want to welcome you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you. So um, tell me how you got started working in the fashion studies department at Harper College. How did that come about? I returned to college as an adult. It was finally my decision to seek a degree in fashion design after most of my adult life was spent self-learning. Okay. And when I came back to Harper, which was uh, just a wonderful department, very welcoming and lots of students of all ages, which is very nice, um, my teachers were encouraging me to start teaching. So at that time, we needed a class that uh, introduced students to the industrial sewing equipment. And our coordinator at the time, Cheryl Turnauer, uh, worked with me to create some classes for that specifically, and that's how I started teaching here. Okay, that's cool. Now, you said industrial sewing equipment. Now, what does that mean for those of us who don't know what that is? <laughs> well, there's home sewing machines, and most people are familiar with that, looks like, either right. a little portable sewing machine on top of a table that your mom or your aunt or grandma might have. But an industrial sewing machine only sews one function. It's a huge piece of equipment with a table. It has a separate motor. It's meant to be used like in factories, mm -hmm. and it basically sews forward. Okay. And then we have industrial sergers, which uh, a serger is a sewing, like a sewing machine in the sense that it has four spools of thread, no bobbin, and a blade that cuts off the edge of the fabric while threads are being wrapped over the edge. Okay. So the industrial sergers are meant to be, you know, last forever. Mm -hmm. And then we have the gravity feed iron. Which what is, is a gravity feed iron? <laughs> that sounds very technical. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful, very, very heavy iron, which is connected by a tube to an overhead uh, container of water. So when you depress the button, it has a continuous stream of steam. Ooh, I, I want that for the house. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. great. <laughs> they really are great. <laughs> the non-iron shirts are not as non-iron as they're advertised. That's my uh, running thing. I'm <laughs> always every morning pulling out an iron and ironing board trying to get something set up for the morning. So that's kind of a problem. So um, so we have the fashion studies program here at Harper College. In general, what can you tell the audience about the fashion studies program? What is that? Why do students go into a program like that? What are they getting out of it? Fashion Studies program is geared to be a two-year program, and it ranges in um, content matter from bringing students up to a sewing level, introducing them to particular sewing techniques, and then pattern drafting and draping, and learning how to create original designs. Mm -hmm. This also includes illustration. We have a textiles uh, element of that. We have embroidery. We have uh, many different aspects, including tailoring. And students are, as they go through the program, are producing garments that will be shown in the fashion show. And the annual fashion show for Harper is well known. Mm -hmm. We have um, amazing results from our instructors. They all love what they're doing, and our students' results reflect that. Okay. So what are students um, looking for? I get asked this question all the time because I teach media. What, are, you know, what do students do? <laughs> when, when they leave? What are they, what are they doing out there? We have a very high rate of our students who transfer to four-year universities, and we have a strong transfer program with, um, let's say, FIT in New York, for example, which is well-known. And students move on to uh, finish that degree, oftentimes in New York, um, learning to do internships with specific companies and then moving on either A, to a job within that company, or B, becoming their own company. Okay. Yeah, their own designer. Uh, so, uh, that's a, hey, that's a good question. Is, is there any type of entrepreneurship class offered within the fashion studies uh, program? We do have an entrepreneurship program yeah. that's in conjunction with the business area. Okay, so that is tied together then. Yes. That's, that's good. That's one of the things that I always wanted to do with the old film program that I ran was for students to take an entrepreneurship class because most of them, I mean, it's a freelance business, right? It's a creative it industry and you, you pretty much work for yourself while working for other people. So Yes, yeah. and you need those business skills. Need those business skills, that's right. In our little pre-interview, you talked about how one of the things that the students do uh, as kind of their, um, their jury is they, they have to make a skirt, they have to make a blouse, and they have to make 
a little black dress. Can you talk about those three items and what that involves? Certainly. And why that's important. Um, the garments are chosen so that you're covering a wide range of projects and you're learning specific techniques with each one. Um, they're introduced in the very beginning. The first project is a blouse and they're introduced to the use of a sloper. And a sloper is a set of pattern pieces that have no seam allowance on them. And they're often referred to as blocks in the industry. And so people learn how to draft a pattern from this, add seam allowances. Math is a big part of mm -hmm. sewing and accuracy. Um, when they first make the blouse, they are, I guess, kind of surprised at the number of steps and the options that they have in which to complete that. Mm -hmm. So they're learning sewing techniques, they're learning the pattern drafting techniques, they're learning pressing skills, which are very important. A big part of your well-made garment is pressing. They move on, well, they start out with the skirt, basically, to begin with. It's the easiest of the three projects. And so the skirt and the blouse together equal what it would take to make a dress. Okay. So when they do the little black dress, it's their first opportunity to do something creative. And the direction of the little black dress changes with each fashion show. So this year's theme is 50 Years of Fashion mm -hmm. in celebration of the anniversary of Harper. And so everybody has been assigned a different decade or, or a color. Uh -huh. And um, so it must reflect that time period. And be fun. Um, it really is fun. And some of the students are just over the moon because it is their first creative attempt. So then they move on to something a little more complex after that into the 113 class where they make a, like a men's tailored shirt okay. with a collar stand mm -hmm. and cuffs and everything. And then they also do a lined jacket in the Chanel style, okay. French style. That's got to be very complicated. I'm just thinking about that right now. And yeah, I mean, I have basic sewing skills, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd like to see those. <laughs> yeah. When I said basic, I meant, you know, like caveman sewing skills. So yeah. Survival sewing. The survival right? sewing <laughs> skills. That's right. That's right. I, I can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can get on a button. How's yeah, that? That's yeah, good. That's, that's really good. That's better than what most people can do. Yes. We were talking about that in the office before we came in about survival sewing skills. And, and, and you said everybody should be required to take a class like that or learn how to do that before they go to college, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. It, it's it, a time-saving and cost-saving experience as well. Yeah. There's a, uh, there's an outdoor company called Patagonia that's uh, really making a, a big push to try and get people to repair their own clothing and also to get you to, instead of buying something new to have you send in your clothing to them and they will fix it as part of their guarantee. And that's an interesting, uh, that's, that's, a, that's really interesting in the American market, I think. It so. is. And I think it's something that sewers really appreciate is mm -hmm. the fact that you can reuse something. Mm -hmm. You can upscale it. You can change a few things around. Suddenly it becomes another garment. And those are skills that you can apply after you've been through a few classes. You understand what is what can be done and how does it make it worth it? Mm -hmm. There are some things that you can do. Yeah, you can do it, but why? Yeah. You know, there's just really not a, a good result. Yeah. I, I've seen before reading in like uh, men's fashion magazines and things like that, that a lot of the reason that uh, most garments are made overseas today and not in the United States is that the um, people with the sewing skills are not here anymore. Can you speak to that or what? I think that's very true. Um, I, I think that in general, most companies are not really training people. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And I think if you look at the cost effectiveness of moving those operations overseas, it's much less than mm -hmm. it is here. However, I feel that many of our programs in the elementary school level starting there, and I'm sure all of us can re recall having a home ec class mm -hmm. where we made an apron or a pillow or something like that. There's nothing that follows that for a lot of students. That's that's it. Right. That's your little introduction. If you go to a high school that has like a technical program, mm -hmm. you might have an opportunity to do a little bit more. But that's usually centered more on things like wood shop or, or other things. Right. Now, we shouldn't overlook the fact that sewing is a critical thinking process. Mm -hmm. It's uh, also very directly related to STEM activities. Mm -hmm. Science is involved. Technology nowadays with all the different fibers that are being produced and, of course, um, we can't overlook engineering. Mm -hmm. Engineering, sewing is a lot like architect. We have to create a foundation in which it must function. Right. So we get to play with materials that I think maybe are a little more fun than steel and brick. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, you were also talking about the amount of math involved in making sure that something is going to go together correctly and fit correctly, right? Absolutely. So that's a, a, a skill set as well. And you don't think about that because you, you think about fashion and you think about 
clothing design is a creative endeavor, but those creative endeavors involve all the sciences as well. So, Absolutely. And, and that shouldn't be overlooked. So, right. Yeah. We were chatting earlier about um, that, it, that it is a creative endeavor and that, um, it, that you really have to have the hardcore technical skills down so that the sewing and the cutting and all of that is second nature before you can be creative. And, and you said something that, that I really uh, like and admire because, well, I say it all the time too, is that, <laughs> is that you have to know the rules and be able to follow the rules before you can break them. Do you want to talk about that? About oh, it? yes. I'd love to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the hardest part for students when they come in, they have been exposed to so much in social media and media they see Project Runway, for an example, mm-hmm. and everything looks like it's so easy. Mm-hmm. They fail to understand that those people, have, generally speaking, have had lots of experience at sewing. And that includes not just the exercise of sewing itself, but the use of material. And in our area, so many of the fabric stores have closed down. So mm-hmm. we have a few local um, fabric stores, such as Vogue and Evanston, and Fishman's downtown, which carry nice fabrics. And then we have chain stores like Joanne Fabrics or Hobby Lobby, which are trained to be all things in creativity. And it affects what they are, their ability to use a lot of different fibers. And as anything in the beginning, you don't even know what you don't know. Right. So there is another aspect of it. If you say, I would like you to go out and find five different fabrics, you often come back with the one fabric in five different colors. Mm -hmm. So it's a real learning process. And I, I think it's so important. You can't do any of these steps enough in the beginning. It's not a failure if it doesn't come out right the first time. It's a learning opportunity Mm -hmm. to look at it and say, well, what could I have done differently? Or what should I have done differently? Or would a different fabric make it all different? So there are lots of options there. Yeah, I think that's an issue of educational philosophy, too, in that students have been taught that failure is bad, right. whereas those of us in the creative field see failure as good. Failure is something that you do so that you learn how to do it better the next time because we, we'd like our students to learn from their mistakes, whereas if you fail a math test, that's bad. Uh, <laughs> so. Well, yes. <laughs> Back to math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I just think it's a, it's a different mindset, and it's hard for people. Um, we were talking about the bean counters <laughs> earlier. It's hard for them to wrap their minds around that failure is an okay thing so it yeah. is and I have had several students that have taken that beginning class a couple of times mm-hmm. and that seems to be like everybody wants to be on that fast track to finishing mm-hmm. but that's different than learning yes it's, it, you can accomplish that but what are you learning in that process that's so. right yeah if you're not actually learning what you're supposed to learn then it doesn't do any doesn't do us any good so um, you've published three books yes now as someone who has looked into writing a, a book myself um, in my field, I can t- that's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> so, so tell me about the three books, a brief, brief synopsis of what they're about. The first book in its second edition, and it's called Professional Sewing Techniques for Designers. And so it follows the order of assembly of any garment. Mm-hmm. So it goes into a lot of detail, uh, covers different sewing techniques, seam treatments, sewing, uh, pockets, anything that would relate to completing a garment. Mm-hmm. And um, in the beginning, the first book took three years to write because everything that we wrote about, we were sampling and sewing and reconstructing and finding resources and going over and over what would be the best outcome. And then, of course, we did have a little restriction as to how long (laughs) our book actually could be, which turned out to be a lot longer than everybody thought it would be. Mm -hmm. So the second edition added more updated information such as fitting, fitting techniques, what are what are issues that would be a fit issue, mm-hmm. and then also sewing with knits because um, 50% of our garments are made from knit fabrics, mm-hmm. which are completely different, of course, than woven fabrics. Mm-hmm. We think of woven fabrics as being cotton, wool, those kinds of things that are very stable. Whereas with knits, this is an area in which so much of the technology that advances this comes also from medical discoveries and mm-hmm. exploration. So that's reflected in the fabric like there. wicking and things like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's great. We are going to take a quick break. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to talk to Sharon Zacker about whether leggings are pants or not. That's uh, something I want to I want to talk about. So you're listening to Harper Talks on FM 88.3 WHCM, Harper College Radio. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Interact with our radio shows here at Harper College. You can download the Radio FX app on your smartphone. You can access the Radio FX platform online and search up WHCM Radio. 
You can listen to us anywhere on the go. You now have the ability to access our show schedule, interact with live poll questions, and social media posts. All the amenities you need while listening to College Radio. Hey, it's your man Keith Maurice from the Keith Maurice Show, going two hours long, two hours strong, playing nothing but the hottest music. So make sure you rock with me every Monday from 10 to 12, right here on 88.3 WHCM, HyperRadio.com. And we are back on FM 88.3 WHCM Harper College Radio. I'm Brian Shelton, and my guest today is Sharon Zacker, who is adjunct faculty in the Fashion Studies Department here at Harper College. And we've been talking about all things related to fashion studies. And uh, I wanted to ask you, are leggings pants? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Is that it? Is that is that all we need to say? Is that is that the end of it? Uh, I, it's so funny that... Um, how leggings have kind of taken over. I mean, we had a period several years ago when people were wearing those stirrup pants and right. they were very, you know, form-fitting. But leggings go beyond that. Leggings really are really more like tights, right. like, like wearing hosiery. So they're appropriate in lots of places, and they look great on lots of people, but not everywhere and not everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it, it relates very much to this whole idea of we are so casual in the way we dress. Mm -hmm. And we feel that our casualness should match every occasion. That sometimes fashion reflects what is going on in society. That it's all about being comfort. Mm -hmm. You know, is it comfortable? Are we warm? Are we hot? Is it, you know, I can get up in the morning and put that on. I can go all day. And I can even go out to dinner in that. And right. I, I think that's more the thinking along those lines, but it's not always successful. Yeah, I had a student two semesters ago. She was compulsively clad in, in leggings every every single day, right? And I said one day, I said, you know, "Legging really? Ev like every like leggings aren't pants?" And and she's like, "Well, I work at Lululemon, and this is what we wear to work, and this is what we sell, and so this is just what I wear because of that." And I thought, okay, well, that makes sense for you. You get you get a pass, like you know, I have to wear khakis, right? You yeah. know, that's the <laughs> <laughs> the uh, standard professional uniform, right? Yes. <laughs> um, but you get a pass. But the the leggings is pants thing. It seems like there are so many. It seems like a complete lack of vision and creativity to me. I mean, I don't know why I care so much about this, but I do. Uh, yeah. It just seems like there's so many other things you could be wearing. Exactly. I guess. Yeah. I, and I think we are also kind of attracted to the idea of like a uniform. I mm -hmm. mean, people are, okay, so look around in your classroom. How many people are wearing jeans? Right. And look around in my classroom and how many people come in jeans and a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Now that's, you know, maybe it's a different t-shirt, but mm -hmm. it's a t-shirt. It's a t-shirt. Right. right. So not very creative. Not very creative. <laughs> now, you know, I, I have to say that I wear a uniform. I wear the exact, uh, I have four sets of these blue shirts and four sets of these pants because I teach four days a week. Mm -hmm. And I wear the exact same thing every single day. Um, and what's funny is nobody says anything. You would think that like somebody would notice that you're wearing the same clothes every day. Didn't but, I see you in that yesterday? <laughs> yeah, didn't I see you in that yesterday? But well, that's the beauty of we. And then like you know, the other day I was sick and I and I woke up and I felt just absolutely awful. And it was so easy just to reach into my closet and grab this shirt and these pants and put them on. So well, yeah. you bring up an important part of fashion as well is that I think people find the kinds of garments that fit their lifestyle, right? And they feel very comfortable, uh, and that might be either maybe as a matter of choice of the fabric mm -hmm. or of the style, and it just suits them. Mm -hmm. So this is what they gravitate to. And right. I, I don't think that's any different, really, in the fashion industry. Some yeah. people, some of the designers only wear, like, a black shirt and jeans. Mm -hmm. That's it. That, you know, they do beautiful other things, but for them, that's what they wear. Yeah. What do you see as being, uh, do you, I don't, not that you can necessarily forecast, but what's the next big trend in, in fashion? That mm -hmm. is really difficult to say. Yeah. I think that um, fashion is, the thing that's so attractive about fashion is that it's always changing. Mm -hmm. There's always room for some type of new innovation. But if you'll notice, most of the things in the fashion shows that are being shown are a reflection of what's already been done. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's fresher with color or a pattern or some type of particular embellishment. But what has been done is what's coming back. Mm -hmm. And I think... Um, What's going to change that will be technology. Some some young up and coming designers who have been um, working their way up to that have been doing a lot of things with technology. Mm -hmm. So light changing things, using um, more materials such as uh, plastics and other types of products that you wouldn't traditionally think of as being part of a garment, are coming to the forefront. 
Yeah, it's kind of interesting when you see um, when you see a fashion show on television or something like that, and you see these um, designs that are pretty out there, right? Yeah. And then, but somehow that gets watered down and trickles down into mainstream fashion, and I always find that kind of interesting as well because you can look at that and say, "Oh, I see where that came from now." Came from. But yeah, right. that's well, I think in couture, where where they produce all the fashion shows, they have unlimited funds and availability of things being made specifically for them. So. Mm-hmm. That makes those wild, outrageous kinds of things awesome and available to them. Mm-hmm. When it comes down to selling this um, to the mainstream, or even not even to the mainstream, but even to people who could afford to buy some of that collection, there are changes because people aren't going to want that specifically. Mm-hmm. So they're going to take part of it maybe, mm-hmm. and that's how it starts trickling down. Yeah, And it's not a very long trend. Yeah. Now you're... Um Fashion is in your blood. Your father worked for Hart Schaffner Marks. It was my grandfather. Your grandfather worked. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, he did. He was a tailor, and um, of course, in our family, everybody went to Grandpa to have their coat shirt mm-hmm. or anything taken in. They had a treadle sewing machine, a singer, which I am happy to say I have. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's wonderful having that. Yeah, and you um, were able to work with that company, right? You got a? Did you get a grant? I, I won a scholarship. A scholarship, yeah, yes, sorry, sorry. Yes, um, and the irony was that uh, Hart Schaffner Marks had sponsored the category I won in. Right. Taylor Coates. That's yeah. great, that's it great, was. that's great. So, uh, you know, we were talking about women's fashion, the little black dress and that sort of thing. Do the students in the fashion studies program design men's clothes as well? Or is it generally women's clothes because men's clothes are boring? No, men's clothes are not boring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my clothes are boring. How's that? Yeah. They're subtle. <laughs> <laughs> but we do focus primarily on women's clothing mm-hmm. because um, all of our equipment, our mannequins, our, our dress forms are geared toward the woman's figure. And um, occasionally we, you know, there's that, that uh, area of clothes where people are talking about it being completely, um, anybody could wear it. Uh-huh. And so when you look at that and you start thinking about it, I mean, some of that is true. It, boils down then to fit Mm -hmm. because obviously a male body and a female body are two different fit issues Mm -hmm. so okay so you have um you have a website and i was taking a look at it uh, this morning and a little bit earlier this afternoon and and um you have the information about your your books and your classes and i know you're going to be teaching because some people may be looking at the fashion studies program and say well gee i don't know if i want to take a credit college course but you're going to be teaching in the adult and continuing ed department uh, that's right the spring right yes that will be the first time that i'll be teaching in harper's continuing ed and that's really exciting because anybody can come in and take that what are you going to be teaching i'm going to be teaching three different classes this time around. Uh, the first two classes tie into each other. And they're basically about sewing techniques, refreshing your skills, kind of setting up um, a reacquaintance with sewing and going over choosing patterns and that type of thing. We're going to apply those skills then to making a garment in the second part of the class. Mm-hmm. And then the um, third class that I'll be teaching is sewing with knits based on my last book. Mm-hmm. sewing with knits and stretch fabrics mm-hmm. and we will be doing similar things testing out sewing techniques and fabrics and then constructing um, a, a knit top that sounds like fun it's really fun yeah yeah it's really exciting it's really I'm, I'm really looking forward to it yeah no that sounds great i think that uh, a lot of times when we see programs like this we think well only college students can go do that but anyone in this community who's interested in doing something like this can come and, and take uh, take that and not have to worry about, well, I guess you sort of have to worry about a grade, but, you know, not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, in continuing, Ed, you're not graded. You're, you're not graded at all. But I think the thing that's nice is that as, as a community college, it is open to everyone. And, right. and we are very popular in that sense. We mm-hmm. have people of all ages and in, in both continuing it and credit. Yeah. So if students, if, if people in the community want to see students work, they can come to the college in the J building and uh, go to Studio V or Studio 5, which however way you want to yes, say it. And yes. can you tell me what goes on there? I know that's not your... Um, your baby or anything, but can you tell me about that? Oh, yes. That's a fabulous part of um, the program. We invite people from the community to present their work. There's a jury that uh, goes over what they're presenting, Mm -hmm. and it fits in with not only the fashion design students selling some of their product, but also other artists in the community. But if you really want to see what the students are doing in the fashion program, you should attend our jury show, Mm -hmm. which happens annually. The jury show starts in April, and it changes a little bit in terms of dates. You can find it on the website. Mm -hmm. And um, juries comprised of professionals from the industry, and they come and they look at all the students' garments, and they evaluate them and give them a score. 
So the two beginning classes, the little black dress and the French style jacket, are presented to the breakfast of the jury show. Okay. And you can invite your friends and family. And then you can come to the big fashion show, which is at, always at the end of May. And yeah. all the garments are presented. So. Yeah, we usually uh, promote that on the, on our radio station here. So I have not been to it yet. I have to make a point of going I'll this year. I'll be sure that and you get a ticket. Yeah, yeah. That'll be, it'll be fun. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I wanted to go last year, and I, I don't know what happened, but I, I didn't make it there. Um, on your website, you also have a blog. I do. Um, what are you writing about in your blog? Well, this month I've been writing about brocade and how to use that fabric for holiday dressing. And I also use my blog. I write art- an article for a small local newspaper each month as well. Okay. So we can go to your website and check that out, uh, which we'll uh, put that on the on, when we post this uh, interview on YouTube. We'll put your webpage uh, information up there Fantastic. for that. Um, so we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Harper College this year. And so we've been talking to a lot of people about uh, their experience here at Harper College. And uh, I know that you're friends with Marsha Latrenta. Uh, who is a professor in the speech department here at Harper College? Can you? Are there any good stories? Is she listening right now? Are we going to get her in trouble? Is there? Is there anything we should know? I don't know if she's listening. She's in Florida right now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Lucky her. Maybe Lucky not. Her. Maybe not. Yeah. Well, Marsha and I first met when our boys were five years old, and people thought they were twins. Oh, that's funny. It's really funny because if you knew Marsha, you know that that's pretty pretty funny. But we became friends. We started the Northwest Suburban Women's Literary Guild. We had a book club that we had going for many many years and we just started you know doing a lot of things together both our families and the kids and she was a strong supporter of me returning to school as an adult and she was a great advisor a wonderful mentor when I came back to school and was struggling with being a student and a teacher at the same time Mm -hmm. and um, she's um, also my kayaking buddy your kayaking buddy oh we didn't even get into that you kayak yes we do (laughs) oh goodness oh goodness Where, where do you like to kayak well, we've taken several like weekend trips away, uh-huh. and uh, we have kayaked in Florida quite a bit. Mm-hmm. But um, also, where I live now, we have a small lake, and you can kayak out on the lake. Oh, so that's fun. That's yeah, it's fun. a lot of fun. Okay, I want to thank uh, Sharon Zacker for being my guest here on Harper Talks today, and uh, we have the definitive answer from the expert that indeed leggings are not pants. Correct. Correct. <laughs> leggings are not pants. So if you're wearing leggings right now. You're not wearing pants. Just want to just want to say that. You've been listening to Harper Talks on FM 88.3 WHCM Harper College Radio. I'm Brian Shelton. Join us next week back here at 2 o'clock on Tuesday for Harper Talks.